treasures are sure to let you down So let the walls you've built come crashing to the ground As I tell you of the love I found
welcome to Breakthrough as we come to our service today, as we gather around God's word, as we gather around uh, worship to the one true God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit as the Breakthrough family together. And if you're new to the Breakthrough family today, uh, because this is the first time that you've come to a uh, Breakthrough video, uh, then you are part of the family, the family that is united in Christ, united by Christ, the body of Christ. So welcome. And uh, as you come and as we come together, let's worship him who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you that you are almighty God. Thank you that you are our creator. Thank you that you are our heavenly father. Who through grace, your grace, call us into your presence through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And in doing so, you empower us with your Holy Spirit. So in our worship today, Lord, may we know that we're in your presence. In our worship today, Lord, may we know that empowering by your Holy Spirit, that empowering to be the church that you call us to be. And whilst we cannot meet together physically this day, we meet together virtually. And may we still know, even more so, Lord, your presence with us in all we are about. And may we be the church that you called us to be as your breakthrough family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Jane will be speaking to us a little bit later on in our service. And uh, uh, she's speaking from a particular verse in Matthew. But I'm going to introduce our service with some words of scripture from Joshua. uh, And invite you to say these with me. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered. Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Let's continue in worship to him who is the living and true God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Oh, 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 
Oh, love to 
So last week, you may remember, as part of our worship together, Jo spoke and she spoke about the power of praising God and uh, how uh, at this time, uh, with all that's going on in the world, with all that's going on in our nation, uh, with all the restrictions, that praise is being squashed. Or there can be the tendency for that being squashed. Uh, and uh, she, she witnessed about how her heart was lifted again in praise to God. Bob Kinnear sent me uh, a note. I'd asked him to write it down because I'd seen him in the previous week uh, on the doorstep and he said that God had spoken to him. I said, write it down and share it. Uh, and actually, once I read it, I felt that uh, uh, with all that Joe said last week, this connects. And uh, so Bob uh, is going to share uh, what God spoke to him about about 10 days ago. And uh, Bob has done this. Uh, two days after the sad news of his brother passing away, dying. And uh, so our prayers are with Bob at this time of bereavement. Bob. My daily reading began talking about how our attitude can make such a big difference to how we think and feel. I thought about people waking up, oh, Oh, another day in lockdown on my own and all the rest of it, and getting depressed. And we hear so much of this in, in the news. My reading then mentioned Nehemiah. And I thought of how the people coming back from slavery, feeling so excited at the thought of seeing the city that their fathers had spoken of so lovingly. Such a beautiful city. Then, then they got there to find that it was all smashed down and burned and, and they became depressed. But Nehemiah encouraged them greatly. Then I turned to my psalm for the day, which was 67. And I began reading it from my NIV. But I quickly began saying it in the old common book prayer version. So I took down my old prayer book and the marker was in 67, Psalm 67. I'll just read it to you. God be merciful unto us and bless us. And show us the light of his countenance and be merciful unto us that thy ways may be known upon earth thy saving health among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God. Yea, let all the people praise thee. Let the nations rejoice and be glad for thou shalt judge the folk righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then the earth shall bring forth her increase, and God, even our own God, shall give us his blessing. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the world shall fear him. I don't think that seeing that marker at 67 in my old prayer book was a coincidence. The words, especially in the authorised version, are just so relevant to the whole situation. And from that very moment, my heart was on fire, praising God for what he was saying right now. Oh, wow. This psalm speaks of the whole world in every verse. It ties in with Matthew 28, the Great Commission, and it's ageless, just as the Great Commission is. And it speaks to each one of us as we pray for the healing of the nations, of the world, 
healing of the body, mind and spirit. God's great call. This psalm was written for me and for you. Sunday evening, just before going to bed, I took down a hymn book, the old hymn book, the old ancient and modern, to sing one of the old hymns. And without thinking of any particular theme, I opened it up at random and began to sing, God of mercy, God of grace. Oh, what a wonderful hymn, each and every line. And I was absorbed in it. And it wasn't until I finished that I noticed it was a hymn written from Psalm 67. Now I know that it was just no coincidence. I believe this is a call from God. Not just to me, but to his whole worldwide church. To be awakened. Alert, using all the powerful spiritual gifts that he has given us. Because of all the prophecies beginning to be seen, coming to fruition. And the time of harvest is so very near. Thanks be to God. for a miracle Heart longs for a little bit of hope Oh come Oh come Emmanuel Child prays for peace on earth And she's calling now On the sea of her Oh come Oh come Emmanuel
Jesus said, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. And that reading is taken from Matthew 6, verse 24. Well, good evening and welcome again to Breakthrough. I went for a walk this morning and it was a beautiful shining day. Everything outside was sparkling like diamonds because of the rain the day before. And out there in my garden, there's a huge stack of old branches and scrap wood, which we had been saving uh, for our big bonfire night party, which of course couldn't happen because of lockdown. I must say though that I, I rather missed that great blaze of firelight in the darkness and the fireworks and the children with their sparklers and I missed the family all coming together and sharing soup and sausages and toffee apples but that day has gone it's water under the bridge and now in the towns all the Christmas lights are being switched on in readiness for that onslaught on the high street for Christmas goodies and Christmas presents. But things will be a little different this year, won't they? Because we can't do this and we can't do that. But let's rejoice and be thankful for what we can do. The Prime Minister has opened a window for us to be able to celebrate just for a few days with family and friends. And we can still do some Christmas shopping and celebrate with Christmas services. It feels as though God is repositioning us and reprioritizing what is most important. Sometimes when I'm cooking Christmas dinner and juggling all the saucepans on the stove and the overflowing oven space, while everybody else is chatting and sipping sherry and cracking nuts. I often think of those two sisters in the Bible, Mary and Martha, and they'd invited Jesus for dinner. And Martha was in the kitchen all hot and bothered. She'd done all the shopping and she was doing all the cooking and the tidying. And Mary had welcomed Jesus in probably got him a cold drink and she was just sitting at his feet, talking, chatting, laughing, asking questions. And Martha got annoyed. She said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has just left me to do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you're worried and upset about so many things, but few things are needed, and indeed only one. And Mary has chosen the right one, and it will not be taken away from her. That's from Luke 10, verse 38 to 41. And it's those words of Jesus that God seems to be highlighting to us right now. Few things are needed, indeed only one. And so what is that one thing that Jesus says we really need? It's an intimate relationship with Jesus, like Mary, to worship him, to talk with him, listen to him, to sit at his feet, to serve him, to learn from him. All those other things are good, but Jesus must be first. And I sense that the Lord is saying to us, stop looking over your shoulder. Stop wishing for what you used to have. Don't look back. Instead, look ahead and keep your eyes on me. I'm leading you forward to a new place somewhere that you've not been before. But don't be afraid, because I know the way and I will provide for you.
if God has stripped away a few things from our lives, maybe it's so that we can travel light. Put down all that extra luggage, all those heavy burdens, and just trust him for all that we need for the journey. In the Old Testament, when the God's angel was Sorry, in the Old Testament, when the angel of God was leading God's people, Israel, out of Egypt and into safety. Sorry, go back. In the Old Testament, when the angel of God was leading Lot and his family to safety, he gave them the warning, don't look back. But Lot's life wife couldn't resist one last look at her hometown. And so she stopped and turned back and the volcano caught up with her, drowning her in molten lava, turning her to a pillar of salt. Again, when Moses was leading God's people Israel out of slavery in Egypt and into the promised land, they had a long, long journey ahead of them through the wilderness. God provided for all their needs, fresh water from the rock and a fresh portion of manna every day. But they soon became bored and they started wailing, oh, if only we had some meat. Remember how it used to be. Remember the fish we had in Egypt and cucumbers and melons and leeks and onions and garlic. But now we've lost our appetite. We never see anything but this manna. That's Numbers 11 verse 4 to 6. And God was angry at their complaining. Well, what about us? Does this feel like some wilderness time for us? Don't forget that the wilderness is God's route to the promised land. We are in transit. He is with us. His name is Emmanuel, which means God with us. We are on our way to somewhere. We don't quite know where yet. And the Lord has each one of us by the hand. And he says, no one can pluck you from my hand. He's promised that he will be the pillar of cloud, sheltering us from the heat of the day. And he will be that pillar of fire, lighting up the dark times and warming us with his presence. Because Jesus is the light of the world. You can't see very far ahead with a pillar of cloud in front of you. But that is the walk of faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. We keep pressing onwards as God leads and we don't give up. God made this wonderful promise to Isaiah, to Israel. Um, and it's in Isaiah 46, verse three to four. And it's also just as true for us today. He said, listen to me, you whom I have upheld since your birth and have carried since you were born, even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he who will sustain you. I've made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. And just listen to those key words in that scripture again. Upheld, carried, sustained, rescued. God keeps his promises because he is faithful. And so instead of complaining at what we've lost and what we miss and how boring it is being locked down as they did, Let's start praising God for what he is doing now and thanking him for his grace and mercy, for his guidance and protection and provision. 
as Jo said in her talk last week, praise changes things. It changes the spiritual atmosphere. It bursts open the prison doors and it releases captives. It breaks the chains that bind us and it brings showers of God's blessing. Praise and worship is the very opposite of grumbling and complaining and it produces faith instead of fear. When I was about 15, I remember a scripture lesson with one of the nuns in school. And we were reading from Matthew chapter 6, which Anna read earlier. And I'll read it again. Jesus said, no one can serve two masters. Either you will love the one and hate the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and mammon. Well, I put up my hand in class and I asked, Sister, what is mammon? She took off her glasses. It's money, she snapped. And then she carried on reading. I put my hand up again. Yes. Uh, Sister, why don't they just call it money then? And why does it have a capital letter, as though it's somebody's name? She looked annoyed and she said, Jane, stop interrupting. And so I didn't pursue it any further. Until now, I decided that I would do a bit of research and I was quite shocked by what I found. Mammon is actually a demonic spiritual power which goes right back to ancient times, to the Tower of Babel in ancient Babylon. And he was worshipped as the god of riches and material wealth. It's an evil satanic power that enslaves mankind through the love of money, through greed and gluttony and the love of material wealth and all that it can buy. It's said to control the worldly financial systems. It seeks to rule over us by the fear of never having quite enough. However rich or poor we may be, we would always want a little bit more. And it drives all our addictions and it fosters the fear of not being able to buy or sell. Like ivy growing on a tree, it weaves its way up into your life, tangling up into every area, getting stronger, while the tree gets weaker. The name of Mammon has even invaded some video games. The game of Dungeons of Dra and, and Dragons, where it appears as the Archdemon of Hell. One ancient commentary on the internet said that it is the spirit of Antichrist because it seeks to take God's place as first in your heart. And in Aramaic it could be translated as that in which one trusts or leans upon. So what do we lean upon most? What do we depend on the most? Is it money and worldly goods? Or is it the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ to save us from our sins and deliver us from evil and to bring us into everlasting life? The spirit of mammon operates by deception, so even good Christian people can be deceived. It manifests as pride in possessions, the desire to get, 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 and in an over-independent attitude. Timothy tells us that it's the love of money that is the root of all evil, not the money itself. And so it bodes the question, what is my attitude to money? 
What is my attitude to God? And what about my attitude to the giving of money, to church, to charity, etc.? And so especially then, at this time of year, where we can find ourselves in a frenzy of buying, let's be on our guard. Guard your heart, the scripture says, for therein lies the wellspring of life. Jesus calls us right now to stay close to him and to seek first the things of his kingdom. Because mammon lies in wait just around the next corner, waiting for the chance to occupy God's place in our hearts. And he would lead us into deep anxiety and into debt. Christmas is all about Christ. He is our peace. In him is life. And the life is the light of mankind. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has never put it out. That's from John 1 verses 1 to 3. Lockdown is loosening our tight grip on this worldly kingdom, on all those things that we thought we could never do without. Because as Jesus warned, you cannot have a foot in both camps. You cannot serve God and mammon. So which kingdom are we in? Is it the kingdom of this world or is it the kingdom of God? As Jesus said to Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. So now is the time to choose. We're still in that season of Advent when we're looking ahead to the coming of Jesus. Not only as that little baby in the manger, but as the Son of God, as our Lord and Saviour, and as our Bridegroom. He is coming back for the Bride, the purified Church, who have been watching and waiting faithfully for his return. Jesus enjoyed a good party. He loved to be together with friends and celebrate. And so thank God that we can do that too. And we can enjoy all the good things that he gives and the giving and receiving of gifts. But let's not forget whose party it is. Let's not forget to worship Jesus and to keep him right at the centre of our celebrations and to be ready for his return. Shall we close with a prayer? Father, we give you all our thanks for the precious gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us to keep him at the centre of all we do and say this Christmas as we prepare to celebrate. Give us discernment as we shop. Pour out a spirit of love and kindness and generosity towards those in need. Give us eyes and ears for those who are alone or in trouble. We pray for peace and healing for those who are sick or sorrowful and reconciliation for families who are divided. We lift up the name of Jesus the name which is above every other name. We raise it high above this COVID pandemic and we declare that Jesus Christ is Lord and he will have the victory. In Jesus name we pray, Amen. Yeah.
Thank you for being part of our time together this evening. It's so important that we come together as God's family, the Breakthrough family, and we can do so in this time of worship together. And as we end, as we do each week, let's share in the words of the grace together. And as we say these words, let's picture one another, maybe in Linster Church, in our minds, but perhaps where each other lives. Uh, there may be people who uh, are never been to Linster Church and are have been part of this service. Welcome to you. And let we say these words to you and hear you saying these words to us as we say the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. And uh, as we leave, we will hear a piece of music playing and our notices will scroll. Do please take note of those notices uh, and do be praying for one another. Uh, as we continue through this time, uh, praying for our nation, uh, uh, the healing of our nation uh, at this time. A great turning to God is what we pray for and what we seek. God bless you. Thank mm -hmm. you.